then I just hear like this grunting, like, oh. like coming through. And I'm like, what the hell? And so I'm me and Ian are laying next to each other and we're both awake. And my dad's in a hammock over here and our tent's like right over like 15 yards away. This massive grizzly walks in between my dad's hammock and our tent. And I was too scared, but Ian leans up like super slowly and he just goes, holy shit. And <laughs> just like <laughs> leans back. <laughs> I'm like, what? what? wander our way over, you know, because this is wandering ways. What's Bigfoot possibility? Clink. Howdy, howdy. Oh, another day in paradise. How are you, my man? I'm good. Just drinking out of this nice Bud Light glass that Matt gave me. Good old Matt buddy gave me a, uh, says Montana on it, has a guy on a canoe and some mountains in the background. Uh, he thought of me when he saw it and got it for me, so I'd like to thank him for that. Um, Matt, if you're listening to this episode, let me know you're listening to this episode because I probably know you're not. Um, <laughs> that, we'll is such a, that does seem like a Matt gift right there. I mean, he thinks of you when he thinks of you in all moments. This, he was at a bar, you know, so he's drinking. And you know Matt at a bar. He's loving the women, you know, he's trying to, he's trying to get, find his future, you know, wife or whatever that may be for him. Um, and he's, he's out there, he's hounding and in, in, in that heat of the moment to think of me, I appreciate that guy. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. Um, I actually just saw him. So it was a yeah. blast. It's always a blast to see Matt. Um, you know, it's, it's always a treat, you know, <laughs> um, but anyways, I mean, have you done anything? Oh, you went fishing this weekend. All day long. Yeah. All day long. All day long. Got out there on the kayak, fished for about an hour, boom, all day long, one after another. Just cutty, 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 brook trout, you know, throw some. I didn't even catch a rainbow. I think it was all brook trout, all yellow, Yellowstone cutthroat trout all day long. 50 fish, easy, landed, all all day it but was, he's not telling everybody right now is he really just went to like the was it cabela's or bass pro shop where they got the aquarium and he threw his rod in the aquarium so when he's saying every time well shoot these fish are hand felt hand fed so they're just going at it all day <laughs> no these ones are some high alpine trout no it was good i i kayaked across the lake uh which is a good workout you know nice on the arms um went all the way across there was uh right where the creek was kind of coming in you know the snow melt the glacial melt um found a shelf kind of where the deep went to shallow uh fished it hard uh used the same lure all day long you know i was out there for about an hour and then a thunderstorm rolled in there was thunder and lightning so i was like you know i'm gonna put the kayak go back over to the dock put the kayak upside down so rain doesn't get in it go sit in my car sat in my car for about 15 minutes moved through real quick uh got back out there and then spent another three hours like i was so tired of catching fish because like i was doing other stuff in the boat you know in the kayak you know taking pictures doing this doing that and like balancing the like uh oars and it was really windy so you would drift a little bit and it's like i got so tired of catching them because it's all you were doing <laughs> but it was a fun day because they were decent size you know it was catching decent size ones all day long yo that's nice so sounds like you were more catching not fishing all day long every third cast i kid you not just boom boom boom, boom. dang you know you'd get the ones where they would hit or you'd bring them up to the boat and like you'd hang them up but they just break off as you're trying to get them in the net or whatever uh, but i probably let like i said i probably landed 50 fish yeah i, I saw your instagram and you had a lot of fish um, in it. It was like one after the other after the other. Um, I'm going to be also honest. I sped through it because I got tired of seeing it. <laughs> I mean, that's, how, that's how tired I was of catching them. Like I told Jared, I was like, yeah, at one, like there was a few points. I was like, okay, I'm done taking photos of these fish. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen so many, but I was like, well, some of them are bigger and like with the blue ribbon nets and he's finally going to make me a brand ambassador. So for all you guys wanting a brand new handmade wooden net aquafade mesh uh, gel 
which is biodegradable. It is eco-friendly. Um, these are lightweight nets. They're still cheap. The price hike is going to happen. And there's a discount code if you use the Rugaru, R-U-G-A-R-U. Um, check it out. You'll get a discount on, uh, on a, a wooden net. Um, these are nice nets, lightweight. Woo, look at that. Shameless plug. Exactly. Shameless plug. We love hey. a good shameless plug here at Wandering Place. And so when we get them, it's always a, it's, it's a real treat. Uh, but but yeah, no, check it out. <laughs> check out, check out, what's the name of the company? Uh, Blue Ribbon Nets. Uh, we're redesigning the logo and it's, it's sick because it's supposed to be interactive. Um, basically we're, we're transitioning to make the company focus on the rivers, you know, so like in the logo, uh, you'll see like the Yellowstone River actually going through it. You know, it's a, it's a bend of the river that Josh found on a map and he incorporated it to the logo. Um, just make it look better. Make it look like one that hasn't been done a million times before. Cause right now it's just mountains and a little stream coming with the name. Um, Blue ribbon uh, nets though. So go check them out. Um, sounds like you can catch fish when you have these nets. <laughs> all day long and i gotta get the photo ops in the net so yeah even better you, you, we'll see you, that on their social you, media <laughs> yeah yeah no for me um you know i went i mean i saw matt this weekend um i'll get into that another time but you know nothing nothing too exciting i mean nothing as exciting as what we have going on today which is we have a guest which you guys probably already knew because you read the title of the episode but good for are, you yeah we are super excited i'm going to tell you anyway uh because i am that excited about this interview um it's with joe and i'm going to butcher his bior byorth <laughs> joe byorth uh he works up at pause up which is glamping um if you don't know what glamping is it's it's a hotel out in the middle of the woods. That's basically the rooms are just a tent instead of like a building structure of a hotel. <laughs> um, that's kind of the quick and dirty. Joe gets into it a lot more. Um, you should check Joe out though, because he does a lot of cool stuff. Um, you know, we get into it in today's podcast, but check out his Instagram, J Byorth, B Y O R T H 11. Okay, check him out on Instagram. Give him some follows. Uh, it's it, This was a doozy, a fun one. Um, he kind of has my dream college summer job. It's better than uh, going up on a boat, you know. He has a lot more fun uh, than I did. I got I went crazy. He's uh, getting pitted, so <laughs> uh, I'm super it's a, jealous. It's a fun interview. I mean, he grew up here in the mountains in Montana. You know, like he said, he's, he, we'll talk about the Stillwater River a little bit where he grew up and he knows these rivers he knows these mountains he you know and he loves nature just like us and uh it's kind of cool to hear a perspective of working for a glamping operation uh because of the controversy of all those people that you know oh is it camping is it not camping you know because i think too there is a part to it where for some people that's as far as they want to go that's outside that's outside their comfort zone just to know that there's a bear within a mile of them is is fear you know, a fear factor enough. Oh, 100%. 100%. That's scary for people. Um, but anyways, make sure you again check out Joe at his Instagram, jbyorth11. J-B-Y-O-R-T-H-1-1. Check out his Instagram. He's an awesome follow. Hope you guys love the interview. Um, anyways, let's wander on into Joe. Welcome everybody to another fantastic guest. This time we got our good friend Joe. I'm gonna butcher your last name big time. Bior. 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 Joe Bior. Um, uh, I knew that was coming. Uh, <laughs> I did too. Yeah, I'm, I butcher. I can't even say normal last names right, so it was bound to happen. <laughs> um, but if you want to just tell us, Joe, what you do, um, and a little bit about yourself right now, and we'll just jump right into things. Yeah. So I was just, I was born and raised in Montana in Billings. Um, really good family friends with Zach and 
his little brother is one of my best friends still is. And so that's kind of how I got to know Zach, but now, you know, I'm just in college. Um, I attend Auburn university and now I'm back home working for the summer uh, at resorts called resort at pause up. And so it's a guest ranch. Um, I work in the activities department, so I'll guide uh, various activities, you know, uh, ATVs, rafting, that type of stuff. And, but there's all these different components into pause up where, you know, events and really good food and bed and that type of stuff. So it's kind of known for its glamping. So those fancy tents out and out in nature, I guess you could say. So that's, that's kind of what I do, but I'm in the activities department. So pause up is like a, it's, it's glamping. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out what maybe it's different than like going to a regular resort, maybe. Talk about your clientele too. I think because like I think this is where Kobe Bryant went. Yeah. yeah. Went so there's a, a pause up is a mixture. There's um, like the glamping tents. So they're large tents. Some of them are multi room. Um, you know, with bathtubs and queen size beds and all that. So it's really not camping at all. And then there's common areas where they'll bring in chefs and you know. There's like e-bikes and all these different stuff within certain camps. But there's also a number of cabins and lodges. Like I believe Kobe Bryant stayed at the one called the Blackfoot River Lodge. And it's just like this large cabin, I'm sure whatever family, friends can even say to them. But there are those type of people, um, you know, it's a higher end resort. I believe it's a four star. Oh, but working, wow. I think it's working on the fifth star. Oh, wow. My understanding. How but it's you, kind of fun. how does the star system like how do you gain a star? <laughs> you know, I don't really know. I know um I think different places kind of give their different stars. So, but I know the Forbes standard is like kind of what people want. And so I think there's a bunch that goes into that. Uh, but you know, I so I'm I'm not exactly sure. Activities kind of separated from the rest, like the hospitality side of it as well. Uh, fair. There. Well, on how many, I mean, in reality, how many competitors do you guys have in the Montana region? Well, I didn't think it was that many, but then when I was looking for jobs, uh, I just want to do something outside. When I was looking for jobs, there's actually a number of kind of guest ranches, dude ranches. I think Pause Up is, has a wider um, variety of what you can do and like options as to where you're staying, um, different activities. I know a lot of ranches just focus on their horses or a pause up like we have the horses we have you know the rafting you have the atvs the shooting that type of stuff so i know you guys have a very good clientele um but do, do everyday people come and like do the rafting or do the horseback riding for a day or do you what, what yeah. i guess do you see it all yeah i mean in a sense and a lot of it like you can kind of get a sense for, you know, a sense for people and where, what they're coming from. So like even, I, even recently there was a, I think there was a large group that one person paid for, like one person in a family basically paid for a family reunion. So not everyone was, you know, you know, the highest of high end and, and whatnot, but there are, I mean, there are people like that, but there, I've also seen, you know, everyday people, but as well, far I as guess I, like, if I'm if I'm in the area and wanting to white just uh, white water raft, I don't want to camp. Is that yeah. doable? Uh, it's just for guests. As oh, far okay. As, as far as I know, but I think, and I, it may have changed with COVID. But prior to COVID, for sure, anybody could like come in and use the restaurant and do that. Oh, okay, stuff. okay. It might have changed with COVID, but I actually am not too sure. This is my first season, so. Um. So. What part of Montana is Paws Up? Because I'm sure a lot of people don't know where Paws Up is, along with they probably didn't know what Paws Up was. Yeah, so it's in, it's close to, it's about 40, 45 minutes from Missoula. Uh, it's an area called Greeno, Montana. It's not a town, but it's more an area. So the Greeno area kind of includes like a lot of this Blackfoot, watershed area as well as it even goes like dips into the salmon lake area um so it's up highway 200 towards like where zach's cabin is up near sealy lake and salmon lake and up that area right on yeah. so i love kind of that area down. yeah and it's an area that i just had like never explored until working here and i've like kind of fell in love with it it just like i'd been up through when i was going to you know, Zach's cabin and stuff, but 
as far as spending any real time, I really hadn't. What I like about it is it's, it's kind of got the real Montana feel um, with the, with the way the valleys and the mountains work together. And then you even have all the lakes in that area. Um, And I think it's just, it's, it's, it's just Americana. It's, you know, small towns after small towns. It's, a lot of nothingness, but the forest and the way the valleys work with the forest. And I think that's what makes Montana unique is those those mountain valleys that form. Um, and that's where a lot of the towns are and a lot of these places are, you know, the rivers. But I don't know. I, I like it. It's a pretty area. I agree. And just kind of like the diversity of landscape is actually pretty cool because, you know, you come in through that Missoula, like through Bonner up the Blackfoot. And that's kind of all, you know, real mountainy and has a lot of trees and then once you kind of get up highway 200 towards Ovando, it kind of flattens out like really open like there's some more farmland and type of stuff but even then you still have like the bob marshall is even out that way so the diversity, yeah. like i get yeah montana in general i just think the diversity of landscape is like what makes it so special well and you take that helmville road and you'll get you know you'll get into the bear the elk the you know probably bighorn sheep too in that area I'll just oh, i've almost mind. hit bighorn sheep on the way to work <laughs> yeah oh, right there in Bonner. Oh, really? yeah like just outside of Bonner there's like last week there was just a big one chief on the side of the road like right on the uh the shoulder there I almost smoked it <laughs> oh man um so you said you're in activities there at pause up so what exactly do you do with activities are you like behind the desk taking reservations or are you getting your feet wet yeah, so I'm kind of out and about. I do a little bit of everything. It's unique the way they do it because you actually don't know exactly what you're doing till the night before. So it's kind of fun, kind of keeps you on your toes. But um, like today, I started out just doing shuttling. So I was shuttling like river, uh, you know, the, the fishing guides and rafting guides, their boats from a take in to put out or put in to take out. And then in the afternoon, I did a round of go-karts because there's a little go-kart track there. So I went in, set those up, did that. And then later I was out at the shooting club doing 22s. So it's kind of like you're kind of doing a little bit of everything. You're never really doing, you know, the same thing every day. Like I popped on the ATVs and the Polarises, and then I'm also on the river quite a bit as well as shuttling. So. How many activity guides are there helping you out, I guess? And Oh, there's a ton. I think our – as far as guides go, roughly, I would say around 45. And that oh. that's just an estimate. So there's all sorts because, I mean, you I know you've driven by Zach, but there's that island on Salmon Lake that's owned by the resort. Mm-hmm. I think they just purchased they didn't pur- They purchased it not too long ago. Yeah, they purchased it from the University of Montana because they yeah. owned it and kind of unrelated. But the people who owned that – lake before the guy he was the one who invented like the contraceptive sponge and so he owned that like i don't know built that house on that island and they say it's still really like old school yeah that's the i think uh, dennis washington built that house he okay he's the washington grizzly stadium there in missoula gotcha yeah he had like a yacht with a matching helicopter and it was a big deal he's Mitch. (laughs) Yeah, it's got uh, a lot of his money. Lake. Yeah, he's got to have some money. And it, a lot of it actually comes from the Montana Rail Link, the trains. Oh, yeah, I believe that. <laughs> yeah, but that's, I mean, that's a big part of the history here, you know. And uh, do you ever, I guess, I'm curious, uh, with your guiding and all that, do you ever get down to the Garnett Ghost Town on the BLM land? I actually do a ton. Um, and it's interesting you say that because right now all of our trips are canceled because there's a fire not in Garnet, but up there, there's a huge fire right now. And so they'll take the back road with the Polarises up there and then they'll tour the ghost town. And then they also will do a mountain bike tour. Well, they'll start at Garnet, they'll drive up, start at Garnet, and then bike down to the resort. Because, I mean, as far as Highway 200, that's like a six minute drive from the oh, resort. Yeah. And then obviously up the Garnet road. But yeah, they, we do a lot with Garnet and uh, guests really seem to like it. Just that kind of cool history. Nice. Yeah, nice little hike too. I've I've done the hike and it's a cool yeah. little go down. Definitely. Nice. So, uh, what do you? What would be your favorite kind of activity that you've done while working at Pause Up? 
Uh, definitely river rafting, just because I just have grown up doing that. And I don't know, especially with how hot it's been this summer, it just, you can't really beat it just being on the river. So it's definitely that. And I dig that. I love whitewater rafting. Yeah. And honestly, right now, that part of the Blackfoot, I and mean, we, I did it with Zach over the 4th of July weekend. It's pretty chill still. Like, there's a few parts, but it's kind of more like a relaxing thing more than anything. Yeah. Well, what I what I like about that stretch of the river is you can get you can get a group of guys or gals even for that matter um, on the river there, and you're going to give them the the challenges of the river, but also a day of hanging out, having a good time. Yeah, um, and that's what I like. I mean, the Blackfoot River is a great river to. I mean, fish too is what. Is oh what yeah. I'm, uh, raft and it really know has everything and i mean as you get lower a lot of people tube that in the missoula like where it goes in the clark fork but i really like i said i I've kind of fell in love with the, the blackfoot it's just it's just a cool river like once again that same kind of diversity of river even because like you start up and it's a little more flat and then like where zach and i float it kind of almost gets into like a little canyon with these big rock walls and it skinnies up and i don't know blackfoot's well, I- awesome have you taken it past the Clearwater Junction there, uh, further down the river with Paws Up and whatnot? Or Yeah, so we'll start, like, sometimes we'll start at the Clearwater Junction and then go all the way down to, you know, the Nine Mile Prairie Road. It's just down yes. river. And then there's one called Corks River Bend. And so we'll get out there sometimes. And then I haven't yet, but there's a the next one that's Corks River Bend to Whitaker Bridge, which is kind of way back there. And then that the next one is John's route after that. So hmm. but I haven't, I've, I want to do that stretch. I just haven't yet, but I've done a solid, I don't even know mileage wise, but yeah. Yeah. That's a, sounds like a good chunk of the river. <laughs> well, you're also and, pretty experienced on the still water too, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I grew up doing mainly and just basically that entire river. And then even, you know, hiking up towards, you know, towards Nye and past that where the still water starts. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's, like, my favorite river just because that's where I grew up. But I was curious. Today, I, when I was shuttling, I went up to River Junction on the Blackfoot. Have you ever been up there? Like, so, you know, Scotty Brown, where we put in? Yeah. If you cross that bridge and keep going, it's where the North Fork of the Blackfoot and the Blackfoot join. Have you ever been up there? I've been there hunting. I have not been there fishing, but I've been there hunting. Gotcha. And today was my first time and like same thing. There's another like canyon up there. It's super pretty. But I just have never done it until today. So. Well, I think it's I mean, what sucks about the Blackfoot River is it's an underrated river because of where it's located. You know, you know, uh with Bozeman, you have, you know, the, the he- Missouri River headwaters, you know, you have the Madison, the Gallatin, um, and I'm spa- the Jefferson. Yeah. All right, yeah. there. you know, and those are world class rivers. From Billings, you have the Bighorn, the Stillwater, the Yellowstone, world class rivers. You know, you have the Clark's Fork up by Missoula, and uh, people really, Rock Creek. yeah, Rock Creek, another just world class river. And you know, by Great Falls, you have um, the Marias, yeah, and the Marias too. Uh, What's the like other that? one that runs through Great Falls? The Big Hole, uh, Big Hole, no, Big Hole's down. Towards. I mean, that's another amazing. Oh, yeah, you mean yeah? But there's one that runs through Great Falls. I don't think it's a great Sun River. River. Sun River, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. honestly, and those are all amazing. And I think the Blackfoot just gets thrown at the bottom of the list, and it's, you know, I think there's good fishing. I've caught good fish out of there. You can catch pike out of there. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I mean, and I, of course, its main sort of fame comes from a river runs through it. Yeah, and that's. I'm sure. Have you seen that, Mark? Yeah, we had to watch it in high school. Okay. So if I'm being completely honest and I tell guests this too, I just haven't seen it and I need to because I'm on there every day and just everyone's always talking about it and I've never seen it. It's, it's just a good, cool. solid little movie. You know, it's a young Brad Pitt, so that's kind of worth it in itself. I can get I can get down with some young Brad Pitt for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I said that. I said that to a guest. They're like, oh, it's it's too cold. I was like, well, these are the waters of a young Brad Pitt. Like, you have to get in. <laughs> I mean, they are. Those, those, those waters come from glacial, you know, melt. Um, those are, those yeah. are some cold waters up there in Montana. I mean, especially in the West. Oh, yeah. uh, 
I like I like pa- I mean I like pause up. I've always heard you know the locals in Sealy don't really like them too much. Um, and if you work for them, they kind of keep it hush hush. But um, you always see the vans if you're going to the Missoula Airport, going back and yeah. forth. You always see the pause up vans. So all the time, um, and one can understand why locals wouldn't like it. Like you know, people out of state people coming in and not really having idea. So I it's totally understandable why. You know, locals wouldn't like it. Well, well, I mean, you said it yourself. It's not really camping. Um, (laughs) um, And I think that's the thing, right? Is like you're coming out here to be in the outdoors. And a lot of people do come out to the outdoors to get woke. I don't know. Um, And and they'll they'll consider that, that. I mean, but I think it does. I do think when you're out on those rivers and you're seeing the bald eagles, you don't get the cell service. You know, you are forced to look around and be a part of it. I think, I mean, that's fun. I was, I was just up in the bear tooth yesterday fishing. And I mean, I was catching fish every third cast, boom, boom, fish on, fish on all day long. And I love it. You know, it's this upper, just uh, these places. They're amazing. <laughs> where did you, where'd you go in the bear tooth? Oh, bear tooth lake. Okay. I haven't been there before. I mean, it's in Wyoming. So like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Totally. Um, so you said you've done this is your first season at Pause Up. Yeah, it's my first one. And uh, it's just a seasonal gig that like do they do things in like the winter? Yeah, I mean they definitely lower like their staff is not as many as it is in the summer, but they I believe they still do some snowmobiling and some like the shooting activities I think still run. And then at the shooting club they have like a little sled hill and a mini mini lift up there so they do that like um but i don't i really don't know how much goes on during oh. the winter i was talking a guy I carpooled with today he said he worked there last winter and it's just so different because obviously it's so dependent on weather and a lot of these yeah. people may cancel so it's kind of a kind of like a hard thing to do just in the summer you know commuting and maybe getting there and a trip's canceled or something is there a ski resort nearby? To pause? Yeah, what's the closest ski resort that they would take people to if they skied? It'd probably be Discovery. Where's that at? Um, it's the one outside of Missoula. Oh yeah, probably actually. It's small, but I'm sure some people do it. And what I bet happens a lot is maybe they go like guests would go down to big sky or jackson and then want to do something relaxing and then would go just to stay that, that makes sense which that, i mean i don't know that for sure but i would kind of guess something like that i mean those are the places to do that yeah exactly interesting um what uh well, i guess what 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 haven't you done that you're excited to do this season i guess like, oh. yeah, like well that my season's kind of coming to a close it's the 18th of july when we're recording this and i'm done like august 6th so oh. i kind of think i'm gonna be sticking to what i'm doing but one of the things i kind of wish i had done is they have this they have this super cool ropes course so you get all harnessed up and you know get your helmets on and you can i've just seen it. i've never done it but there's like a 60 foot drop where you jump off and then you know you know, you're obviously connected to a cable, but a lot of the kids, even like teenagers and parents really like it. That's one thing I wish I would have done. Oh, wow. But they oh, have, yeah. I mean, they have everything from like paintball, repelling. Um, what else? Paintball, repelling, like clay shooting. And then they do, sometimes they will go to Alberton Gorge for whitewater. Oh, wow. If, uh, if I guess it's, a, and it's kind of a haul from that area, but um, it's a full day thing, but they'll do Alberton Gorge. Then, uh do you uh do they do hunting in the fall you no know, i don't think so and i've i've had i've wondered about that because the the ranch is thirty seven thousand acres yeah and so, and I've seen signs yeah and so with the amount of acreage they have you have to imagine that elk you know pile elk and deer pile into there i mean and i've so, seen herds of 300 elk over there all the time yes so i'm not exactly sure i from what i have heard i don't think it's hunted very much but i wouldn't be i'm not too knowledgeable on that so 
So uh, when you're done with this, you're just going back to school? Yep, just back to school. So I have nothing too exciting. I'm going to drive down once I get done with work. So uh, do you see yourself like, since it's a summer gig, but do you see yourself maybe doing this, I mean, uh, one, next summer, and then two, into the future maybe? Or like how long do you see yourself doing this summer gig? I kind of think this will be my only summer. Um, I'm going to try to start looking into some sort of internship or actually this I'm, it's probably really smoky in Billings, I'm guessing, but that was one of the things I was thinking was maybe fighting wildfires. I think that would be something that would be really cool uh, and fulfilling. So that's something I was, I kind of started looking into as well. Oh, nice. But this will probably, this will probably be my only season. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting wildfires would be, it'd be uh, fulfilling for sure. Yeah, we have uh, actually upcoming. We have a guest going to talk about what uh, he was a he was on the heli attack crew. Okay, uh, for fighting fires and front lines, and we also interviewed Andrew. Uh, he's a second second cousin of mine, or first cousin removed, something like that. Um, he uh, he fights fires uh, for out in the Bitterroot Valley um, is where he's out. Okay, of. his dad was a you know smoke jumper for thirty plus years and. He, you know, he loves it. They're just crazy. And, the t- and I was just down in uh, Red Lodge and you could see the fire kind of pittering out on the hill. You know, they, they did the fire line well, but the middle of the fire is still kind of burning like small smoke. So it's like, oh, it'll burn out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Zach, do you remember Mr. Benzie? Love Mr. Benzie. Great. He was Great. a smoke jumper. Oh, yeah. Was he? Yeah, dude. He, I, that's all I remember him ever talking about, actually. <laughs> <laughs> He's a smoke jumper. All he talked about to us was uh, he was he was there in Honolulu on the day of Pearl Harbor. Um, oh wow! And it was crazy. No, he was, yeah. he's living history there. But yeah, smoke jump. I mean, it's crazy if you think about oh. what those guys go through on their bodies, and especially being up in Western Montana, you're going to see a lot more of it. I don't know uh, if if there's any fires going up by you right now, but you see those camps, uh, Sealy Lake, a couple years ago. Man, I swear to God, it looked like a military zone. The way that town had spotlights going up those four service roads to the mountains. Uh, the tanks were in town. The National Guard was blocking things off. Um, it, it's, I mean, it's what goes into putting out a fire. That's why they cost so much money. Oh, and one thing I thought was interesting, I was talking with a coworker today who has some friends who are firefighters, and I'm not exactly sure the truth to this, but they were saying that some of these, some of his friends were saying that they felt that they were kind of just preserving, um, you know, a lung, a, the lumber stockpile, like for the government. They felt like it was less about preserving like the ecology and the nature of it, that it was more just about preserving the money of what they get from logging and all the lumber, which oh. I kind of thought, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I never thought of that. I haven't I'm, either. Which I'm, I just never even heard that before. So I thought that was super interesting. Yeah, I, mean, I never heard anything like that either, and that is interesting. It makes you kind of want to uh, look into it a little more and see if there is any, like, a little bit of truth into that. Well, it would be how the decisions are being made, right? Where it's like, how many days are they waiting to send in this, you know, this level, then the next level, then the level after that, right? Like, like the time frames of, like, are they letting it burn longer or burn shorter, um based on the areas too because some areas like out in the middle of nowhere especially up in alaska and in some places here in montana too they just let them burn because it's like it's it's in such a remote spot that it'll be put itself out and it's kind of the natural way anyway um but i also know too we've built so many structures that it's it's become about structures being burnt especially down in like california Um, oh yeah Definitely. I get what you're saying though, because it, it would be it would be the decisions made um, and money spent. Because you know, if you want to make some money next summer, do it. You'll make some good money. You'll make some lifelong memories. Uh, it'll be bitch work. Like you'll be fucking working your oh, ass yeah. off. <laughs> um, but I think in the end, it it's one of those uh, things that you 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 know you'll be fulfilled with it. Um, 
but yeah, they do spend a lot of money. That's why like when people don't obey fire laws and then they go and put a firework down the gorge or run an ATV up a, <laughs> on a fire per road, you know, you're going to start it up. But. Yeah. No, like we got some pretty gnarly fires. I don't know. The smoke situation right now is decent um, where I'm at down here, but you know, I, I was just in Northern California yesterday and you could just see this bank of smoke just kind of, kind of more, I guess, east of Shasta. There's a ton of smoke. I mean, I couldn't see Shasta. If we got up high enough, you could see just the tip. But other than that, it was all fire smoke. You know what that means? Time for another commercial break where we get to tell you to like, subscribe, and review our podcast. Whether you're getting that podcast on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, WhatsApp, whatever podcast app you use, you can make it happen. And don't forget, this is also the time to let, uh, let you guys know that you can pick up that Wandering Ways swag at the Teespring. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the bio down below or in the episode description. It's even in the show description, too, if you can't find it in the episode. But you can go on there. You can get your sweatshirts. You can get your uh, shirts. You can get long sleeves, short sleeves. You can even get some socks. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, highly recommend. You will... Be impressing everybody at your next bonfire with some Wandering Ways swag. You know, and if that's not enough, we're going to tell you to follow us individually on our social medias. You could check me out at the Ruguru or Zach of Wandering Ways. You know, check out the adventure firsthand where there might not be any ads. Exactly. And who doesn't like some good free pub? I need the follow followers to go up. So I'm going to throw out reverend marcus check me out on the twitter on the instagram um i do some cool stuff so please give me the follow all right we also do not cool stuff yeah but anyways uh let's keep wandering on oh well kind of what i was about to ask was you know with all those record-breaking temps that we've been seeing i don't know if you guys have talked about this yet before really but how noticeable was it for you, like, out in Oregon and stuff? Could you really tell? Oh, oh man, what? It was, hot. it was hot. Stupid. It just, like, where I'm at right now, it's been the, it's the coldest it's been um, in a long time. And it is, today the low was, let's see real quick. But it's the been high, that way. The high was 97 today. And it's been, like, that's actually kind of where it's been, but like yesterday was 91 and it felt great. And I was upset about it because I'm tired of feeling hot. <laughs> That's what Montana has been same. Yeah. And, um, with when it was 115, when we we're in Oregon and it was 115 degrees, the low at night was like 91, 95. That's yeah. absurd. That's what you see in the South. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it yeah. Was I knew it was serious when the coast had the high of 99 that's like anytime the coast gets hit with an extreme thing that's when it's like real you know the f big fires last year like the coast got hit that's when you knew the fires were like legit this heat wave the coast got hit with it you know it's like a legit heat wave <laughs> yeah, yeah no it's crazy uh and i was looking on the news with oregon uh they said like up leading up to that weekend it was like Last year, we had two days over 100. The year before that, we had zero. The year before that, we had, like, one. The year before that was, like, three. And it's, like, this year, they're already at, like, six, seven, you know, over 100. And it's, like, this is nuts. This shouldn't be happening. And then in Montana, too, like, it, Tyler came out in May. Uh, we are on the Big Horn in May, and it was 100 degrees then. And then in June, a couple times in Billings. And, like, I, like, I, I think that's another thing. I, I like Billings. I like Eastern Montana personally. And I say it a lot because I think it's the true Montana. We get the hundred degree days in the summer and we get the negative 20 degree days and then the 50 mile an hour wind, you know, we're like in Western Montana over there, you get the peaceful, you know, 80 degree days in the summer. Yeah. But I mean, even here, it's the same hundreds right now, yeah. which shows how bizarre it is, but it's kind of funny. 
uh, like just being around Missoula, especially working on the resort, the amount of Eastern Montana slander there is. Oh, I say, I'm like, they're like, Oh, where are you from? I'm from Billings. And then people are like, Oh, I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> I never tolerate the slander. It's, I still love East. Like it's totally different. I can like, it, Oh, hundred percent. In some sense, it's not as beautiful, but even you get out into the plains and like, you can see forever. Like that's the true big sky. If you're thinking of, you know, Oh, hundred percent. You're I like, I really want to take Mark hunting, but he's always busy in the fall. Cause he's an <laughs> trainer, you know, uh, yeah. um, he, and, and cause where we go hunting is in the middle of nowhere, you know, but you can see the snowy mountains with, you know, they're only, you know, 50, 50 to a hundred miles away, depending on where you're at. Um, but these fields are just nothing. And, the deer and the numbers that the deer are the elk and the stuff and it's just like you don't get too many places like that anymore I, we're in the middle of nowhere no yeah, you're good. <laughs> well, in my absolute favorite place that's totally in the middle of nowhere out towards you know you keep taking molt out towards raffle jay oh yeah there's a spot um i've gone pheasant hunting out there but there's a spot where you're kind of in the middle you know like wheat fields all around and then like boom bear tooth's here snowy's here crazies here and like you're standing in the middle and like anywhere you turn it's openness plus in the distance like the mountain range and it's but i think that's the thing right is we just don't have it on all sides of us on the eastern front we just have it on the east side where like in in the other places it's more the valleys and i think that's what like again like i say that what makes montana montana is the valleys and the way the valleys are formed uh because they're not that big you know when you get to bozeman you're in bozeman for a while and then you go up and then you're into the Whitehall Valley and then you're into the Butte Valley and then you're into Missoula Valley, you know, the Bitterroot Valley there. Um, and Kalispell's even that way. When you're driving up to Glacier and Kalispell sits in those bowls and it's those old glacial bowls that the mountains formed. And yeah. I think that what, what, what also is really cool about the Eastern side is the, is the cliffs and like you, I mean, you see it a lot in the Stillwater, uh, yeah. the, the rocks, the rugged rocks of that Eastern front versus like, the western side where it's more nice you know treetop peaks <laughs> oh totally and one of, i think one of the most and i haven't really got to spend enough time there but one of the most slept on mountain ranges is the bighorns and they're smaller but there's like a lot of hidden gems up in the bighorns i need to spend more time there but it's just kind of crazy to well think and of. when you think about it you're willing to drive to like a bozeman yeah, that's two hours away. You're willing to drive to the Bear Deuce. That's two hours away. The Bighorns are just as far, and they, the Medicine Wheel, spectacular views. It's a really interesting old thing up in the mountains that's been protected by the National Forest Service, and it's a it's a beautiful area, and it's big snowmobiling in the winter. That's what I've heard, and a ton of people go to the Bighorns and or bring out their Polarises, and there's even like golden trout up in the Bighorns. I know people who go up there and catch golden trout, and it's a place that people just kind of like shrug off and never think of but somewhere i want to spend a lot more time oh yeah it's because it's in wyoming no one wants to go to wyoming that's yeah, true <laughs> <laughs> people people always ask like oh how beautiful is wyoming like down at school and i like dim this i'm like all right here's wyoming and like here's the good part of wyoming <laughs> right <laughs> like and i guess in some ways it's i'm just you know there's plenty of other good places i'm sure but, uh, you know, we spent a night, uh, we did a, we did a road trip a couple years ago. You too? Uh, yeah. yeah. We, we started in the Grand Canyon and worked our way up to the Black Hills and then over to, uh, you know, through the Utah parks and whatnot, and then over to Yellowstone. But we stayed a night in Wingle, Wyoming. It was right on the like Nebraska, Wyoming border. <laughs> uh, there's nothing out there. Nothing. It was flat. I mean just blah <laughs> probably good star watching though stargazing was yeah and and mark uh we, we we he got to experience one of those like tornado like thunderstorms that you know eastern wyoming produces and uh he had bald tires <laughs> sweet <laughs> hey we made it we made it through i'm gonna be honest i didn't really think we were for a, a little bit of it i mean i was got scary <laughs> was it one of that one of those rainstorms where you just can't see yeah i think there was hail in there too and oh. the wind and yeah and then anytime and, you hit a small puddle the car just goes <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness oh um, that's great i had a experience not because of my bald tires but driving up on the highway to red lodge just from billings 
one of those same type of, you know, those storms that Red Lodge get, they just roll in out of nowhere. Well, I'm in my truck and it's like just about dust. So about, you know, deer o'clock and my windshield wiper breaks, my driver's side oh. windshield wiper breaks. And like the responsible smart thing to do would have been to pull over and wait it out. But I was like determined to just get there. So I'm like wiping my hand on this windshield oh my gosh. and like, and all I'm just looking for is like the, you know, the lines of my yeah. lane and then the headlights i'm just trying not to hit so like it was so scary but you know this those storms that roll in especially like when it's a really hot day and we get them in billings more than anywhere but super oh, yeah. hot day i'm sure wyoming's the same where it just rolls in and hammers yeah. you. that's uh, one of those times you drive by braille yeah. <laughs> i've never thought of that or heard it called that you know you could probably take the passenger windshield wiper off and like jimmy it on to the driver one so at least you would have had some vision but it, it was the um it was the mechanics up so the passenger was just doing this the driver just wasn't even moving so the actual oh, wiper was oh. fine but the like whatever mechanical issue happened was like <laughs> uh, the problem is is you guys you and your brothers have driven that same truck for ever uh, now, and a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the yeah. mechanics weren't working <laughs> No, All right, we that. are going to do, I think, everybody's favorite segment on the podcast. It's cool shit in nature. So, Jill, we're going to have you join us today on it. And uh, I think this is actually a pretty cool thing in nature. But essentially, what it is. It's another one of these. <laughs> yeah, this is great. I, the reason I found this is said it was a uh, land shark. <laughs> But essentially what it is for people listening is this tiger that's like hidden in long grass comes out of nowhere and jumps up. I mean, they're sitting on an elephant, so it's got to be this line <laughs> jumps, shoot, 10 feet in the air and uh, totally mauls this guy. I mean, like he's bleeding. Yeah. But what's crazy is you can't see him in the grass, like, at all. They know he's there, though. They're shooting shots at him. They're beating him with sticks. Oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look at this, though. He gets no. <laughs> like, why does the film cut? Like, Can you he's not filming? Being that guy? Yeah, I know. Just imagine being that guy with just a casual tiger, just, you know, deciding to eat your arm. I mean, yeah, he's <laughs> bandaging it up real quick. He, like, oh. I love it because he, like, hits it. He's like, this is going to get rid of it. Just a good one. <laughs> I mean, it, it's another point for the animals. So I'm, all, I'm about that. Yeah. My, my absolute favorite part of this video is the link, which is nature is fucking lit. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> On the Reddit link. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, uh, that nature is fucking lit and then nature is metal. Those are two fantastic what? to look at. Yeah, nature is metal. If you, uh, I encourage everybody, if you have a queasy stomach, it may <laughs> not be the best, but like it is, nature is metal is fantastic to look at. You'll see like a, a lion just, I mean, maul something, <laughs> or you'll see like a bird, like have something. It's like, it honestly, it can actually be pretty quite queasy in the i see a lot of gross stuff in the human body like weird angles oh. and uh it, this gets me sometimes too <laughs> well i i noticed a lot of the stuff you bring up on cool shit in nature is is animals lunging at us so like i feel like it's kind of that secret want of yours of like man i hope we're out hiking one of these days in the mountains and a bear just lunges at me or a mountain lion just <laughs> lunges at me like this because you show an unhealthy amount of he's, animal he's manifesting it he's manifesting. i do i have noticed i show a lot of those too but i think it's because that's what like when i'm just looking through them like those are the ones i sit and watch and i go that's pretty gnarly like that's cool and then i save it <laughs> have you had any animal attacks joe no attacks but um, I was camping. I had a very close bear encounter, though. I was camping up East Rosebud, um, doing the Sylvan Lake hike. So it's it's right there at the trailhead, and we we're just it was like probably two a.m. and I just hear like this grunting, like 
oh. and coming through. And I'm like, what the hell? And so I'm me and Ian are laying next to each other and we're both awake. And my dad's in a hammock over here and our tent's like right over like 15 yards away. This massive grizzly walks in between my dad's hammock and our tent. And I was too scared, but Ian leans up like super slowly and he just goes, holy shit. <laughs> just like <laughs> leans back. <laughs> I'm like, what? what? He's like, just, and it smelled awful, like absolutely terrible. Oh, and no. It was a massive grizzly. So I didn't see it. Ian saw it. Um, so scary, but it just walked on through and you could hear it from like a long ways away. So he, Ian's up in Alaska working, kind of doing the same thing you are, huh? Yeah. He just, um, he finished up um, rebuilding our 100 year old farmhouse. And then oh wow, he had quit his job a while ago and he had a buddy call him who worked up at a lodge in Alaska said, Hey, this lodge needs a new guide. Are you up for it? And so like within a week and a half notice, he just flew up there and he's in Alaska now. So. Yeah, I saw he 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 started an Instagram. Which he it's just <laughs> unlike him. He's not a social media person. <laughs> I, I feel like he wants to be. Um because especially, especially in high school when we took when he took that film class you could see there was a want to be there oh, yeah. but like he just didn't know how at the time i think i feel like it's there's always been the want to be it's in pretty it. funny actually yeah this is it's almost, it's almost like watching your your dad try to get on instagram oh so, gosh <laughs> well, he'll figure it out he's a smart guy he yeah. uh maybe maybe when he makes it big up there we'll have him on too <laughs> probably got some cool stories if he's working at a lodge in alaska i have a buddy who used to do like bear guides at a lodge in alaska at, like, like bear hunting no like it was just take tourists out into nature oh. to find bears to look at <laughs> yeah they've um he i got a someone took a picture of him he chased a black bear off the other night and then they've uh a certain black bear kept coming through camp so i, I know they've had to fight like fire some warning shots and stuff. No dang. So there's a lot. I've seen a lot of pictures of bears already. And stuff. Wow. Alaska just like Montana's wild, but like Alaska just brings it to a whole new level that I <laughs> really, really want to experience. I just haven't been there yet. Yeah, Alaska right. is nuts. Alaska is nuts. Mark worked on a he worked on a charter boat up in Alaska. I think we one of the very early episodes of the podcast. Mark talks about that. So were you doing like the total Discovery Channel, like Alaskan crabbing or whatever? What is yeah, that? Yeah, but, uh, but for sockeye salmon. So oh, sockeye. it was head out on the boat, fish sockeye salmon for six weeks. Um, I didn't do the crabbing. I mean, the water got gnarly um, quite a bit. Um, I remember one time there's these holes like where we put the fish in the bins like below the deck. There's like a big chute that you can, and it's a big square. Like you could easily fall into it. And then there's these other ones that like a smaller hatch and it's probably about like this, but it's about only the size of your foot. And I remember one time I didn't see it was open and I went right in it and I dropped like <laughs> zero to the bottom real quick. And I thought I broke my hip. Oh. I, so pain. <laughs> I just hit it and I was just like, oh, but yeah, no, Alaska, because I used to go to Katmai National Park, um, at Brooks Creek, you've like if you've seen National Geographic film, the fish jumping and the bears catching the fish, like where they film that, uh, that's in a national park up there. Okay, it's really cool. That's you gotta cool. take like a fifteen minute like bear video. They give you a, like a little pin saying you have bear etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, wait. did you guys hear about the bear mauling in Ovando? Yeah. Yeah, so about, I don't know, 15 miles from Paws or from work, um, there's that huge, you know, the biker route that goes across the nation. There. And I think these people are part of it. I may be wrong, but, um, and I could totally butcher this story, but from my knowledge, this is what happened that they were camping in the town of Ovando, just a tiny town, and a bear came through camp and they had chased it off earlier. And this is probably, I think it was late, like early, early morning. Um, so, you know, 2 a.m. or something, they chased it off once and then the bear came back and like dragged this person out of the tent and ended up killing her. Yeah, I did hear about that. I didn't know where that was. But that's it, Ovando. Not, 
that, yeah, it was Ovando. And I might have totally butchered that, but that's like 15 miles from where I work. Oh, wow. Do you, do you guys have a lot of bear encounters that pause up? Uh, I've seen two this season. Um, and they're both just while I was, um, you know, driving the roads. And so I don't think I, I'd heard maybe two weeks ago, there was one in the camp in the morning, but just black bears. I, I don't think anyone's there. I mean, grizzlies are around just not as much. There's just so many people around and stuff. So black bears for sure. Um, but so the, but the crazy thing about the Ovando one is I was talking to my uncle who knows someone in that area, in that valley there. And I want to, they got a trail cam picture of what they think now was the bear that did it. And in the trail cam picture, it had like a messed up jaw or something, like a visibly messed up jaw. And so they ended up shooting the bear and the bear they shot and the same thing. And so they, what they think, or what I heard, I'm not, you know, this is not an expert's word, but what I heard was that um, it could have been like, whatever this happened with the jaw, whether it was like an abscess under the, the teeth or something that could have been causing like a bunch of this behavior was like just the pain and the annoyance from whatever's going on. Well, probably. Because probably. I mean, that's not normal bear behavior. No, a bear doesn't get chased off, come back and like hunt, like drag you out of your tent. Like <laughs> that's so, and then it was raiding, it was raiding chicken coops after that. <laughs> yeah, he was looking for food. He he probably was struggling. He or she, I don't know what the bear said. I'm not sure either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it uh, it sounds like yeah, probably harder to get the food it was trying to get if it had an injury. And humans are a little bit easier going to houses, garbage cans. You know, Ovando makes sense why it'd be in a town looking garbage. Um, yeah, I mean it's crazy. It's right there. Uh, it's right where we put in to go whitewater rafting. That's oh, it's crazy. Those fields, you know. <laughs> and remember, I think I had told you, but there was a survey done recently in the past. There's 50 plus grizzly bears in that valley. That oh, yeah. go, and then goes up there into the bob and whatnot. But which is just abs like absolutely absurd to think about. <laughs> oh, I mean, I think I honestly think the mountains in Montana have the most dense grizzly population. Um, on the planet and I think that's kind of why it sucks that they want to hunt them because it's like we just kind of got back to them being the apex predator um and we're like we're at a point too it's like they used to live out on the plains like that was common for bears to like live out yeah. on the plains. I get like we can't have them now because of societies and all but I mean if we can't get them to that sustainable point where they're out on the plains I think you just let them be <laughs> oh totally and I remember when I was in high school, I saw a video, you know, out by like Shoto. Oh, yeah. There was like, I saw a video of like three grizzly bears in a, like in like a field in the plains. And I was so confused, but I, I hadn't realized till recently that that's where they had lived. But that's, and that's also part of why uh, grizzly bears, um, like we, we, we don't think of them as like a pack animal, but when they are out on the plains, they group up like that because that means they're they're thriving well enough to where they don't have to compete with one another. And they, they used to be at that sustainable point. And it was just the fact that we forced them up into the mountains and forced comp competition, you know, with one another. Makes sense. They have to do that. Cats too, big cats, you know. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> speaking of big cats, I went to the Big Timber Rodeo a couple weekends ago and we stayed up, um, up the Boulder River. And I don't know if you spent much time there. Absolutely beautiful back there but we got lost and sidetracked on some dirt road and it's probably 2 a.m and like the buffest largest big cat i've ever seen in my life <laughs> ran across the road like i mean have you seen the picture of that like the swole kangaroo yeah, yeah. it was like that i was like <laughs> i'm sitting in my car and it's you know how, like cats are limber and like yeah. this cat was like stiff just like muscle man it was like it was absurd i've never seen anything like it it was so you know, massive um, oh that's awesome i like i like seeing cats in the wild uh, oh, i think it's so cool um They're cats are cats are the one thing that scare the crap out of me in the wild because they see me before i see them but, <laughs> like how cool would it be like he went out from a mountain lion like the apex like stalking predator had to stalk you to death <laughs> yeah i mean maybe that's a cool story <laughs> can you believe though that, that that's like the one animal you can kind of fight off and they yeah they get huge but they'd say to fight them off right 
Well, that's why. Did you see the video of the kid in Utah? Uh, it was about a six minute video of him like walking backwards down trail in that, uh, that mountain lion was chasing. Oh, him. yeah. It wasn't until the end where he finally throws a rock at it that it takes off. That's what you got to do. You got to, you got to attack a cat because what a cat will do, it'll run away and then it'll come back and stalk you. But by that time that it comes back, if you can get going, they, you know, they're just like, whatever, unless, unless you're really agitating it. But if you're, wor- if you're playing with it, like he was, you know, where he's walking backwards, like he doesn't want to get his ass beat. I get that, but <laughs> get yourself a defense mechanism and throw that rock because then that cat will, he will bounce and you can use that time to grab another rock and get your ass down that road. But he also is filming the kittens. Don't yeah. like, if you see kittens, get the fuck out of there. Well, that's so that's, that was going to be my question was are cats as protective of kids as like a sow grizzly bear. Is More bear? so. Really? Okay. More so. Don't put you on the ground quicker. I've just never even thought of that until you brought said that. that's what well that video he was like look at the little kittens on the road and sure enough the mom and she's <laughs> protective yeah yeah you mama mama cat's gonna take care of her kittens <laughs> see i i don't think mama bear in comparison to mama cat mama bear <laughs> will take care of her cubs but she'll also let her cubs get into trouble a little bit first like she'll let them. No, I'm not sure necessarily with humans, just because of what we as humans have done to bears. But when you watch like them interact, you'll you'll see bears kind of you know stumble and fall. Like the mom will let them climb the tree and fall. Yeah. You know, where like with a cat, she's very just like fucking my way or the highway. Or yeah. that the video on the bear tooth highway of the like the bear chasing the car. Oh, I know. And like the the little cub trying to climb that. The ice wall. <laughs> right. Whatever. That's a sick yeah. city. The Bear Tooth Highway is really cool. Uh, Mark's only done it a couple times. Uh, I, you know, I just did it yesterday. No, no bears, but I saw a nice herd of three buck and I've seen mountain goats up there. I've seen grizzlies. I've seen black bears. And I love that place. So cool. Hey, anyways, I have got to be that guy as I am always that guy, but we're getting close to the end of our uh, interview here and the podcast in general, which means final words. And Joe, since you are the guest, you get to go first in the final words, and it is literally anything you want to say. If you got a PSA, you want something to promote, uh, you just want to ramble on about some sort of like constellation you're really into. Um, it could literally be anything you want. Um, if you also want, throw out your social medias for our, v- our wanderers to check you out even more. Uh, but anyways, final words, Joe. Yeah, I mean, first of all, just thanks for having me, fellas. Just super pumped to come on, chat with you guys today. But um, no, I mean, the one thing that I actually shared something to my Instagram today was about just uh, res- like when you're visiting anywhere, like the respect you should have for that place and like, you know, know the place's culture that you're going into. And so like, for instance, like, I don't know, leave whatever you think you're bringing to this place, like totally just embrace and, you know, accept whatever you're kind of going, whether it's the nature, like say you're coming to visit here, just like try to understand how we live here in Montana. And so if I were to go to Oregon or Northern California, I would try to do the same respect that because i think that's i've been seeing just you know stuff recently with you know people in general people from montana too in montana but you know, out of staters and whatnot so just preach respect for the nature and stay safe out there yeah i dig it i dig it um no i agree 100 percent. what's your uh instagram in case my instagram is j byorth 11 my last name is b-y-o-r-t-h 11 <laughs> All right, cool. Zach, final words, my guy. You know, I'm going to stick with Joe and kind of say, you know, leave it better than you found it. That's one thing we definitely preach for sure. Uh, you know, we go on a hike, we pick up the trash, we see, even though if it's not ours, because uh, no one else is going to do it. Let's be real. If you want, if you want to work at Paws Up, no one else is going to apply. Only you can apply, just like Joe did, and get a good job there and a fun job. You know, where you're learning some outdoor skills and having fun in nature. Um, I, you know, I love going up there into Western Montana. You know, I've got plans in late August to go up there again. Um, 
go slay some pike with my new boat, you know, so it'll be fun. Uh, more adventures to come, you know, more Bigfoot stories to come. Uh, we'll be looking for him while we're out there on the water and on top of a mountain or wherever we may be because he's watching. <laughs> All right, Mark, your turn. I dig it. I dig it. Um, stay beautiful, everybody. I uh, want to just say super thank you to Joe for coming on today. It was awesome. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little jealous of the job you had. I wish I would have gotten something like that when I was in college instead of spending my time on a fishing boat. It uh, <laughs> sounds a lot more fun uh, than when I did. Um, but anyways, Reverend's final words of wisdom today is, you know, just go out, have some fun, explore and experience nature, even if it's in just your backyard. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing. I went to a different part that I've never really been to around here and I had an absolute blast and it's because I just went and saw what could happen. Um, but anyways, you know, again, thank you so much, Joe. Make sure to check him out on his Instagram. Um, but that being said, peace out, everybody. Bye.